All right, good check. Woo! Hey guys, it's me once again, the colonist. Welcome to Colonial Impact Wrestling. Gut check. I don't know when this is gonna air. I'm probably not gonna put it up until after a couple episodes of Conquest have already been done. So you've probably already seen those episodes, but I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna try and not give anything about way away about when I did this recording. But in any event, welcome to Gut Check. This is episode five. Uh, we're pretty much doing what we're doing. Uh, We've kind of been along the same path here with Gut Check for a little while, and uh, this is episode 5. I believe the first match is Evan Hunter versus that guy, and if I look at my records, which I actually have on me this time, this is Evan Hunter of Trevolution going up against that guy of the Abusement Park, Jack Anderson's team, and I just realized I have to clean my sheets. Because I have guests coming over, and they're going to be sleeping in my bed, three bears style. Um, although I don't have three people sleeping in my bed, but... I mean, to be a little mean, the guy is about the size of a bear. <laughs> but, but, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. That was a terrible thing to say. But, but in any event, here comes Evan Hunter. Uh, so Evan Hunter, who uh, is a big fan... Of, he was former U.S. military, uh, back in the Army, he was a sniper, and, you know, he got honorably discharged, you know, he served, well, he didn't get honorably discharged, he served his term, and then he came back, he's seen some shit, I'll tell you that right now, um, but, he's okay, and he wanted to come and compete, this was his lifelong dream, you've seen that from Chris Melendez, you've seen that from, I think, Jesse Neal, when he was in the Navy, so, we're doing the right thing, we're bringing somebody in who's served in the military, Good for him, and I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he gets to compete in a match. He's going to be around and be in gut check for a little while. So, it's nice to see him around. Now, this is part of our really long and boring and uninteresting NW, uh, not NW, CIW gut check championship tournament. The winner goes to the second round, which God knows when that's going to be, because this tournament is taking literally forever. And that's because I couldn't do any recording for the longest damn time. Here comes that guy to the same generic entrance, which some people have entered and some not. You know what I think I'm going to do is, uh, the next time I record this, now, I recorded this match, this, this set of three, I recorded in June. No, I recorded this in, like, May, I think is when I recorded this. No, I lied, June, I was right, I recorded this on June 1st, and, uh, it's been at least, it's been at least a month since that time so I don't really know what's even gonna happen so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see who wins these matches who's going on to this but uh, since then I'm actually the next time we do recording a gut check I'm gonna actually have all my entrances in check or I'm just gonna be lazy and not do it I don't really know just yet but it's gut check so like who cares we're it's all original talent anyway like they don't need to be individual we've got a whole stuff with conquest going on and stuff like that so nice little fun tournament that we're doing here um, we're gonna have fun with this we're going to have a ton of fun. I know that we're going to really enjoy the time that, you know, I love Gut Check. I love seeing all this original talent come in. I'm glad we've got them hired. Uh, sure, it's not so much storyline based as it is just like go out and wrestle and stuff. But sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to just like be like, you know what? We're focused on the wrestling. And we're focused on that because I hate to quote our Impact Wrestling counterparts from way back in the day. But wrestling matters. And I do, I do believe in that philosophy. Like, I believe in the storytelling just as much as anybody else. But it's also nice to have a place where you just, like, do tournaments. And you just, like, see who's the best wrestler there. It's, a, it's just kind of like our, like, well, no, Ring of Honor has storylines. But, like, we're just doing tournaments or messing around. The match has started, and nobody doing anything. At all. Everyone just walking away. That guy tried to get a grapple in. And now, here we go. And... <laughs> Evan Hunter counters a punch and leaves. It's just like, I really don't want to fight. I'm really not in the mood to fight that guy. Um, now, that guy, uh, who has a reputation, I guess, but he seems to be fine. I mean, I don't know who's good. He's, uh, he's good friends with Crime Time. Uh, not, not the actual, not like actual crime, but like Chad and JTG he's actually friends with. Uh, and now turning reversal and oh god what a clothesline by the former army sniper not the american sniper this isn't bradley cooper don't worry we we don't have enough money i mean 
sure, our funding has increased, which I'm sure we've already we've either already disclosed how we've gotten the money, or that's going to happen pretty soon. So, but we couldn't afford Bradley Cooper. This is Evan Hunter, uh, and now leaving the ring is uh, that guy. And these two feeling each other out and then just, like, not doing anything. This has been a pretty slow start to this match, uh, which could be a good thing. You know, sometimes you need a little time. Now, Roman, <laughs> that guy throwing Evan Hunter back in the ring and walking away again. So, nothing happening in this first outset of the match. Now, these guys, I really want to see... I mean, my team has done fairly well. I need to check. I need to update the, the, the bracket, which we... I don't think anyone failed, except for me, filled out a bracket. What a right hand, though, by Evan Hunter. A vicious right hand. And the match continues. And another knife edge chop. Uh, it's kind of big. It's almost Booker T-esque in the way that he wound up that chop. And now what's Evan, gonna, Evan Hunter going to do here? It looks like, oh, and a gut buster. Nicely done. I thought it might have ended up becoming a snake eyes. But not to be so... In this early going of the matchup, and a thumb to the eye, or an eye poke, I don't know which finger he used, I can't see from this angle, but, and now a sleeper hold by that guy, will Evan Hunter be put to sleep? Will this be the end of this first Gut Check tournament matchup here on the fifth episode of CIW Gut Check? And my goal is, is that, my hope is that this will air once we've actually caught up in episode number with... Conquest? I don't know. I might just get bored and post this one day. I don't know. This might post before the Conquest episode. I don't know. It depends on what I'm feeling. But nice snapmare. And now going for a knee drop. Nicely done by that guy. And both of these guys would love nothing more than to make it to the second round of the tournament. God knows when we're going to ask them to come in and do it again. But, you know, that's the fun of it all. Is you record sometimes and you do it, but... We're actually going to get back on our shit. That's the thing. And I think we've actually done pretty well with that. And what a right hand again. Evan Hunter sticking primarily to the strikes, which is really should come as no surprise. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is something that I think the Army trains fairly well. And a low blow is probably not something that Evan Hunter's used to. Obviously forgot his cup tonight. And oh, don't do it again. God, that guy just going straight for the genitalia. And that is not very nice. Of that guy, but that guy part of the amusement park, so obviously not meant to be. This is kind of a nice guy's finish last type of industry, so I guess it should come as no surprise that that is the case. And now a nice set of kicks and a counter there by Evan Hunter. Which one of these two will make it to the second round? And a thumb to the eye of Evan Hunter zone. Evan Hunter has he has to know when to get down and dirty, and this is obviously one of those opportunities for him. And now a kick to the back of the knee, and which one of these two? is going to punch their way, literally punch their way, because this seems to be a fairly uh, fairly strikeful match rather than more of a Smash Mouth style rather than this. We're not going to see a technical match out of these guys. Let's put it that way. We're not going to be seeing German suplexes and headlocks. Uh, the sleeper might be the closest thing to technique that we see this entire match. And now a kick to the gut, collar and elbow tie up, and now it looks like he's going for a swinging neck breaker, nicely done by that guy. Who, oh, and, a nice, and an elbow drop, and went for a cover there, rope break, so nothing doing there. And that guy now leaving the ring. And both of, neither of these guys, it's been really strike and walk away. There really hasn't been a lot of keeping on your opponent, which is somewhat surprising to me. I think that's probably, that would be sound strategy, but you know what? This is also gut check. This is all original talent. We don't know whether these guys have had a lot of in-ring experience or not. So this might just be the pacing that they take. I mean, we know some people's got him, but I don't know if that guy's ever been in a wrestling ring before. I think he might just have the fight experience and then taking little bits and pieces from JTG and Shad. Evan Hunter, he's got his army training, but, you know, who knows how, how far that goes. That's a completely different aspect when you get into the ring. And now a little game of cat and mouse. And now a right punch and went for a kick, countered. And these guys all about the strikes. And Evan Hunter, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we leaving the ring so many times? And a knee to the gut. A running knee. Nice job by that guy. And, oh my god. Boy, of any night that Evan Hunter wishes that he had had his cup on him, it's got to be tonight. 
after that vicious punch to the dick of the third or fourth assault on the genitalia itself. And all of this is, it's just all strike. God, that guy, what are you doing? But this has been, it's been punch, leave the ring, punch, go back into the ring, punch, leave the ring, punch, go back in the ring. Somebody do something. Uh, and a spike pile driver or something. Definitely something. That guy with a spike pile driver, nicely done. We don't ban moves here. We don't care. I mean, <laughs> so what? Spike pile driver? Whatever. They'll handle it. They'll go on. We don't have any really big lasting injuries. You know, knock on wood, but you know. And cut. And Evan Hunter, once again leaving the ring. How refreshing. Springboard and went completely up and over Evan Hunter. Who didn't even move. Who didn't even leave his position. And went, and that guy just completely misjudged the trajectory of his assault. But I guess that's what happens sometimes. You know, you just never know. And Evan Hunter, oh, and a nice flying swinging neck breaker there by that guy. Who's, I think, gotten the better of this whole thing. Went for an elbow drop. Cover could be over. And it is over. So after a bunch of leaving the ring solitary punches and going in and out profusely an elbow drop like that gives that guy the first round victory so Evan Hunter not gonna make it through this round but it was a I, I, I guess that was a good match I don't I guess I don't really know because like I, it, that was kind of tough to call because it was punches and you know just a bunch of strikes it was really a brawl but it was a very, like, low-paced brawl. Like, it was just kind of back and forth, but it wasn't a fast pace. It was like, punch, leave the ring, kind of walk around a little bit, grab a sandwich, come back, punch, come back into the ring, finish your sandwich, punch, leave the ring. So that guy with his, with his brawling prowess, I guess, his street cred has gotten him this first-round victory. So we are going to see him in the second round. One score one for the abusement part. Now let's move on. Eventually. Anytime. Oh, okay, here we go. Chromatron, Valiente, one on one. This is also a first round matchup, as they all have been. We've seen Valiente already, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, he was in the tag match last episode. Uh, in a losing effort, losing effort, I believe, to Team Trevolution, if I'm not mistaken, which I very well could be, because it's been a long time since I've done this, but uh, I can look it up on an at another time. It's really not that important right now, but we've seen Valiente before. Um, no, Valiente and Oli Canoli, that was the team, and they lost, I believe, to Magma and Buzz. If I'm not mistaken, or or vice versa, or Valiente and Oli can only beat Magma and Buzz. I know that that was the matchup, though. So that's that. That's that. This match is is a uh, Valiente is Mag Team Magnitude um, versus Team Joshua Campbell, who has Chromatron. And speaking of, here he comes, and uh, it's a nice looking robe. Now Chromatron, I have been told is completely made of steel. He is literally the man of steel. Now, whether I believe that or not, because he's got the whole body paint thing going on, and he's got like, he's kind of like a, like a gray ultimate warrior with way less muscles. And maybe that's just the face paint that's doing it for me. I like it though. I dig the look. Whether he just body painted himself that whole color or whether he's actually made of steel, I don't know. But he, he must be from the future, because according to Spongebob, everything is chrome in the future. And seeing how he may very well be the future of CIW, who knows? Maybe he is actually from the future, or maybe he will be the future, if everything is chrome in the future. Which he has said to me, I was talking to him backstage, I said, what do you think about going into this match? And he said, I am the future. And then I asked him, you know, you've been waiting a long time to get into the ring, what are your thoughts now finally getting that chance? And he said... I am the future. I'm pretty sure that's all he can say, but I didn't stay too long after that because we had to get going. Here comes Valiente. Uh, Valiente, who is a Mexican luchador, uh, trained in Lucha Libre style, uh, was in AAA for a little while. Uh, not the wrestling company, the actual tow truck company. 
the, the insurance company. But, you know, that's what it is. He came to America. He found a steady job. I mean, to, to be a, trained in Lucha Libre style and then to come up to America and to actually pull off an insurance company job, that's impressive. So I am very impressed by Valiente, not only in the ring, but his work ethic in general. So we're going to have to see if this is going to pay off for him today as he faces off one-on-one -on -one in his first singles match in CIW, gut check, against Chromatron. Now, I'm not going to even bother live tweeting out Snow this because he's not even going to know what the hell I'm talking about. So, well, I will, but I will do, what I will do is find your Al Snow tweet of the day, which I did not do on the first episode of Conquest, which I'm sorry for. But I'm pretty sure that we've probably made up for it by now. I don't know. It depends on when this airs. We may have made up for it. We may not have made up for it. I don't know. Um, basically, from now on, I'm kind of just going to do gut check on the fly. Like, I'm just going to be like, oh, yeah, let's just throw in another thing and gut check. Why not? So, that's basically what my deal is. So, eventually, this is going to go in. We have referee Luke Goss assigned to the contest. Here we go. And first thing is nice leg sweep. Valiente showing off that quick... Style went for a uh, plancha dive or just a senton off the mark. But now going for a quick pin in a roll up could be over here already. But Chromatron kicking out, and that was way too fast to have a cover. That would have been a stunner, a literal stunner if Chromatron had lost that quickly and a right hand. Down goes Chromatron. This is the still a first round match, which we're actually coming to a close on. I think we only have like four or five more of these. Uh, four, four or five more of these singles matches before we can actually like move on with our lives and go on to the second round, which will have some sort of stipulation attached to them because I I love singles matches as much as the next guy. And a spike pile driver, nicely done by Chromatron. I love them as much as the next guy. That notwithstanding, I would like to have a little more creative stuff going on in Gut Check. Like, I love Gut Check. I love watching these singles matches. They're fun to just... It's fun to have some one-on-one -on -one matches. I mean, I think everybody knows that default Daryl McEwen match, which is still, I think, the best gut check match we've had to date. Um, and we've had some really great matches. We've had, when we did that one episode of Rebellion, which Lord knows if we're actually going to be able to get back to that or not. I'm not too worried about it because we've got a lot of stuff going on as it is. Valiente with another roll-up could be over here for Chromatron, and Chromatron kicks out at two. And... Nice arm uh, headlock takeover, rather, by Chromatron. Chromatron definitely more of a technician, I would say, than Valiente, who's going probably for the quick pins. Nice backbreaker, take a drink. Uh, probably going, probably a little more of a mat technician than we'd see from Valiente. He's trained in Lucha Libre. We're going to see more high risk from him. So it's two clashing styles on two separate teams. And, oh, a nice move there, kind of a bridge. Uh, didn't bridge it into a pin, but a nice over-the-top suplex. Nicely executed by Chromatron, who definitely who just used a left-handed punch. So we've got a southpaw here for someone who is allegedly made of steel. And nice counter there. And nice belly-to-belly -belly side slam. Down goes Chromatron. And uh, I wonder if maybe camera cuts... Maybe, maybe we can afford to put camera cuts in and gut check. But maybe in the later rounds. Maybe not in the initial round. Because we're trying to get the feeling out. We're trying to get you guys to rally behind these guys. Now, the goal is eventually we are actually going to have gut check storylines. Now, that is way in the future. And the reason that's way in the future, uh, groin attack, take a drink. Uh, Lucas doing his terrible refereeing as usual, not even going to bother even like disqualifying or making him stop it, just like, whatever. I'm just doing my thing. Uh, excuse me. But once these tournaments are finally over, we will actually have gut check storylines with teams, and we're going to have some team stuff, and we're going to have some fun wrestling stuff, obviously. Like, we're just going to have some fun matches. But we're also going to have some top storylines. There's a reason we're only doing one big title and one tag team title. And that's so I only really have to write two storylines. The rest of it, we're just going to do tournament stuff. Like, we're going to have just, like, matches, and, like, we're just going to mess around with this. Like, But we'll have some storylines. They're not going to be huge. And because, you know, I'm dealing with more... Oh, nice jumping leg drop. Nice by Valiente using that speed and agility. And a nice reverse uh, insiguri almost. Uh, not even sure what to call that, but it was nicely done. You've seen that uh, made famous by Shelton Benjamin. 
and Valiente using a lot, and a nice European uppercut. You can see the clashing styles. We haven't seen a lot of big stuff from Chromatron, where Valiente is going for a lot of the flashier moves. But I get to promote the main promote the main title, the the Gut Check Championship. That's gonna have storylines to it. The tag team match championships are gonna have storylines to it. Other than that, I really don't think that we really need to worry about it that much with Gut Check. It's original talent, like sure. We'll have, we'll have some storylines, but it's not going to be nearly as involved, I guess, as Conquest. Uh, only because I really want to pay way more attention. I want to make sure that when Conquest has a pay-per-view, it's got like four or five really thoroughly developed feuds. Or at least two or three really thoroughly developed feuds and a couple ones that have kind of been put together. Not haphazardly, because obviously I want to have that opportunity involved. And I want to have matches that have motivation and reason for you to like them. But, you know, it's difficult because I'm also doing this on my own. And being able to have storylines written out for two completely different brands, one of which is just all original talent, so it's not even people that, like, you know, and it's really and it's really creating the character. Where a lot of these guys, like the Grim Reaper and Satan and stuff like that, like, they're easy characters because you already have an idea of what they're doing. And Chromatron, oh! Chromatron... Just use that left hand, and I think that might have actually been a, a some brass knucks or maybe some chrome knucks. And Valiente getting right back up. I thought that might have actually been it, but Valiente not going to say die that quickly. Nice leg sweep, and we're seeing more and more mat technique from Chromatron, which has been impressive. He has shown, he's had a very technical outing, but Valiente's speed and agility have really come. Nice hip toss there. Nice speed and agility have really come into play here. And neither one of these guys have been able to get a definitive advantage over the other, even though they've had this clashing styles. But I have to say, they're meshing well. They're meshing well against each other. Now Valiente leaving the ring, which is an interesting idea. Chromatron now going up to the top. I'm not sure about this idea, but an elbow drop got him. Impressive elbow drop, taking a page maybe out of Valiente's book. And Valiente now with a count, an Irish whip counter. And referees count up to four. Valiente now thrown into the barricade. And Chromatron, strangely enough, not capitalizing on that. Instead, getting into the ring. Maybe to just make sure that he wasn't going to get counted out. But, oh, and a nice reverse heel kick. Which I think is actually what that's called. Valiente now doing well on his own. Which one of these two is making it to the second round? I've been impressed by both of them. Both Magnitude, which Valiente was Magnitude's very first pick. Chromatron was Joshua Campbell's third, and who knows whether this one is going to uh, deteriorate or any further, but a nice rolling senton. Chromatron now showing some very strong, strong moves, and it really impressing me, both of these guys, valuable assets to their in respective teams. And now turnabout fair play, Chromatron now taking Valiente to the ropes, groin attack, take a drink. And these two men obviously have the drive. They see the their, their eyes are on the prize. But is it going to be enough to get them the win that they so desperately desire? And Chromatron now trying to recover his strength. Valiente getting right back up. And these two guys putting on a show. The guaranteed putting on a show. These guys have a great match. And now a swinging neck breaker. Nicely done by Valiente. A, a, almost a technical spat of his own <coughs> is that neck breaker going to be enough to put Chromatron away indeed it will and we didn't get to see the Valiente plex but it looks like it wasn't needed so the agility in the Lucha Libre style comes and pays its dividends with your winner being Valiente now while we have this little lapse in the action I'm going to actually finally get this Al Snow tweet of the day uh, after I finish texting this girl, da, 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 da. but Valiente punching another man of magnitudes into the CIW gut check tournament into round two, which I'm still not sure what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be good. I don't know what the stipulation is going to be for round two, but we're going to make it work. No matter what it is, we're going to have it be exciting. Not to say that this isn't exciting because it is. I love calling regular matches. And, I mean, I just love calling matches in general. And I'm sad that I don't get the opportunity to do that more. So we have one last match here. And it is 
tag team action. Hardcore style. Andy Day. Aha! Here we go. So, we have two men who I am proud to call my own in the British Knight and Symphonic Mr. Vix going up against Zephyr and Galen Starr, both of which are on Joshua Campbell's team. Joshua Campbell repping two teams tonight. Uh, Joshua Campbell's, or the Campbell's Camp, which is not what I actually, not what it's actually called. Uh, see, it worked better with Camp Cornet. I mean, Camp Campbell sounds kind of cool, but that's up to him whether he wants to keep that name or not. But, regardless, Twitter's going to decide to just crap out on me for no reason. That's cool. Um, but as soon as it's done crapping out on me, I would love to find my Elsno tweet of the day. Uh, so... Probably at this point, you've probably already heard, uh, I'm going to try and actually get Trevor back on the show to maybe do some gut check episodes. Like, I loved him on Conquest. I thought he did a great job on Conquest. Uh, so this is obviously going to air after he's been on it. So it's been at least a couple episodes of Conquest before this is going to be put up. So I guess I have, I have put up a little bit of a time frame. Uh, Al Snow, that's what we want. The real Al Snow... With a W, not an E. No, I don't want news about Al Snow. I want tweets from Al Snow. I don't care. I don't care what how Al Snow's doing. I want to know exactly what he's doing here. Um. Okay. Okay. I got one. So we're actually gonna have an Al Snow tweet today. Uh. So when this airs, this is actually gonna be a little while because I'm doing the commentary for this, but I don't know when it's gonna pop up. So. Whatever, I guess, but here comes Symphonic Mr. Vix. And the great thing about Mr. Vix, the reason I like this guy so much is he reminds me of a young Triple H. In, in Back when Triple H was doing this shtick, when he was doing this, oh, you're the best, you're the best, he's got that pompous attitude, but he's got the technique to back it up. And I really, really enjoy that this blue blood type of mentality is really coming back, has came back and he decided to keep this gimmick and, I mean, Triple H, whether you love him or you hate him, is one of my favorite guys of all time. So to have somebody who's almost a, the spinning image, an emulation of Triple H, is a very valuable asset to have on Team NWO Shark Tank. Which is what I love. No relation to Mark Cuban, by the way. We didn't get funding from Mark Cuban. Uh, or from any of the members of the Shark Tank. The, we, the reason I call it the Shark Tank, we were going to have, we've been trying to get actual blue... NWO shirts, but it has not been happening thus far because we've been just trying to get the shows airing. Here comes the British Knight. Uh, the British Knight who went one-on-one -on -one against another member of the NWO Shark Tank. Uh, yes, Ratch Tech. BK Ratch Tech. Uh, for those of you who remember those shoes, um, that's what he wanted to be called. Now, the British Knight confuses me because I don't understand the horn. Like, what, what exactly is he, and how did he get an affinity with England? Or Scotland, or anyone involved in the UK? I don't understand that myself, but you know what? I don't really care to ask. If he, if he puts up the numbers, if he performs, I don't really care. But he was in a one-on-one -on -one match, uh, I think it was last episode, in a losing effort to uh, the Colonial Clone, who was my, uh, the, my spinning image, and... Did a very good. It was a very good match. It was a great performance by both guys. Uh, it just happened to be the Colonial Clone got the better of him on that exchange. But that's not to say that he couldn't come back and have a great performance here against this man, Zephyr, formerly known as Fusion. And uh, I don't know whether I ever explained. I probably yeah no I probably did explain it already. But just in case I didn't, I'm going to do it again. Zephyr is a corrupted Fujin. Because if you follow the Mortal Kombat series, not counting MK10, and I will get into that rant in a minute, but Zephyr Fujin, the guarding, being the wind god of the second half of Earthrealm, really got to Fujin's head. So the Elder Gods knew that there was a big problem, so they, and he was about to invade people, so they struck him down. Well, Quan Chi is like, okay... That makes things really cool for me. I'll just go ahead and snag this wind god. So he dresses him up as a Mortal Kombat ninja. Abracadabra, Zephyr. So this is the resurrected Fujin, formerly known as Fujin, now rebranded as Zephyr. 
the Wind Ninja, which is one that they never really addressed. I mean, they had Smoke, which I guess is close, but as it is, teaming up with the Star of Ireland, Galen Star. And Galen Star, who had an impress, he tried to have an impressive outing against, I believe it was Abracadabra. And Abracadabra just beat the holy hell out of him. But Galen Star, he made a good attempt. I have to say, Galen Star made a great attempt at winning that match. And so this match is going to be a uh, Shark Tank versus Campbell team. I forget what Campbell's actual team name. I know he gave it to me, but that was like... That was last August, yo. Like, that was so long ago. And I don't even really feel like bothering and going back. So this is my team versus Joshua Campbell's team. And there's really only a couple teams that, like, we know the names to. And it's not like I don't care. It's just, like, after a while, it's, like, it's kind of irrelevant. Like, we're just, like, we know the people involved. And as a result, we know the people. Because we know the people involved, we can then turn that around and make it so that, you know, we don't, the names don't really matter. We know the people on the team. We know the team members. So there we go. So this is actually, I believe, the third of three uh, tag team matches to determine who the triple threat hardcore match will be for the CIW Tag Team Championship, Gut Check Tag Team Championships. We have already seen Valiente and Ole Cannoli beat Magma and Buzz because I just found the sheet of paper. The match has started, by the way. We have also seen him and the Golden Mask beat Eclipse and that guy. So this is the last one of these, so we're going to see the winner of this is going to face Valiente and Ole Cannoli, as well as him and the Golden Mask, Magnitude and Trevolution's teams, respectively. The winner of that will face those two teams. The winner of this will face the winner of those at whatever event we put the championship match on. And the winner, that will be the first Gut Check Tag Team Champions. Now, here we go. Back to the match. Galen Star with a hip toss. That's the first thing I see out of this match. Obviously, it's going to be pretty obvious that I'm going to be a little biased here. Because, you know, I've got a team. I've got my own team. I'm obviously going to be rooting for mine. Now, not to say that if Zephyr and Galen Star pull this match off, which I have to would probably guess would even... I would wager would be an upset. Just because I know how good my team is. And I know how strong and how powerful and how solidified as a unit they are. As my team, as the greatest organization on the planet, the NWO Shark Tank. But if they do happen to pull this off, I'm not going to be mad because they will. They're going to have to earn it. It's not like they're going to. Che they can cheat their way to a victory, especially in a hardcore tag match. Mr. Vix just pounding the crap out of Zephyr's face and making sure that Zephyr could not, and I mean could not get anything going right there and Zephyr getting right back up trying to get the British Knight to and a knee to the gut uh referee Luke is gonna just try and keep order in this one this is false count anywhere as well and a nice fallout slam uh, shades of Jeff Hardy by Zephyr Vix is getting his face grinded by Galen Starr very smash mouth style even though he does stay he does uh choose to go up and over whenever he gets the chance he does his aerial moves but he also does a lot of this kind of stuff so it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. And now, the, it looked like British Knight was going to go for a chair shot. And Zephyr countered. And British Knight smartly, smartly walking away from the chair. And how smart is that? And that is how you know that my team is paying attention. Dragon Sleeper on the Galen Star. Mr. Vix, I didn't really catch what he just did there to Zephyr. But it looked like it was good. And now an Irish whip into the corner. Zephyr stopped at the chair. And now Vix has got a sledgehammer, and this cannot be good. And now, oh, and now choking the life out of Zephyr with that sledgehammer. And boy, the spinning image of Triple H uses a sledgehammer as his default weapon. Hmm. A nice scoop slam there by Galen Starr. Impressive over the much larger British Knight. And oh, and now we got a weapons war going on here. And now two chair shots, and down goes Galen Starr, who gets right back up. No selling the chair shots whatsoever, but he's from Ireland. He's a tough guy. Like, it doesn't matter what your size is. If you're from Ireland, you know how to fight. And I'll give him that. 
A nice European uppercut. Didn't even know that Zephyr knew about Europe. But then again, he was Fujin, so I guess, you know, you can translate that across the border. And now just pounding close fist punches into the horned skull of the British knight. All the while, the skull of Zephyr getting destroyed by a steel chair, courtesy of Mr. Vix. And this match has been brutal, back and forth by both members, and Vix has really loved that chair, and now slamming it into the gut of the Galen, of Galen Star, the Star of Ireland. Which one of these two teams will join Team Trevolution and Team Magnitude in the Triple Threat Tag Team Championship match? We will find out by the end of this one what our match for the Tag Team Championships will be. And now... <laughs> <laughs> now the British Knight running. Oh, Final Symphony! Didn't even see it there on the left-hand side. Mr. Vix landed a Final Symphony. Going for cover. Could be over here, is it? And no. Kick out at two by Zephyr. On the other side of that, as that was happening, the British Knight ran with a sledgehammer and Galen Stark got as far away out of, out of dodge as he possibly could. A smart move by Star, who, you know, I'm never going to insult the intelligence of my opponents. In, whether it's on my team or not. They are, they're smart guys. That's why they're here in CIW Gut Check. I'm not going to say they're going to win. Now, all four men have a weapon. No one's going to be able to fight, beat each other. And, <laughs> and now, oh, what a sledgehammer shot by uh, Mr. Vix right into the side. That could have broken some ribs. And now the British Knight going kind of AWOL with that uh, barbed wire 2x4 and paid for it by a tear shot to the dome and this dome's taking quite a lot of punishment up to this point and which one of these men is going with and a chair shot ddt right into the steel chair and a bulldog mr vix cleaning house british knight's been there kind of for support but really mr vix has been the mastermind behind this one went for a chair shot didn't quite get as much as he'd like from Galen Starr, who's still holding a barbed wire 2x4, which actually took down the British Knight. All four of these guys, you could see it. They have the drive. Their thirst for success. Spinning heel kick by Vix, and that busted Zephyr open. Zephyr has now gone, donned the proverbial crimson mask, and uh, that man does not have a family because he died, and he's, and he's been resurrected. So that man does not have a family, so no Jim Ross quotes here. And no, I don't think anybody expected this match to be a technical bout. And now going for a Dragon Sleeper. Could Zephyr tap out to a Dragon Sleeper? Boy, wouldn't that be an interesting plot twist to this match. Is if we actually had a submission victory in a hardcore match, which I don't think has happened. Well, at least it's never happened in CIW history. Uh, whether it's happened in any other wrestling promotions history, I'm sure it has at some point. And now Galen Starr. Playing dirty. What a DDT. The cover on to British Knight. Could it be over? No. Kick out at two. And now Team Joshua Campbell has put together a comeback here considering that they had been pretty dominated for the first out, first outing of this match. Has put together a comeback. This looks like this match could really go either way. And this is the excitement. The crowd is coming alive. This is the excitement you can expect from CIW Gutcheck, the BSTF from the British Knight. Is this going to make Zephyr tap out? It very well could if Galen Stark can't get there in time. And Vix, I can't believe it. We just said about the tap out victory. And there it is. The BSTF by the British Knight takes down Zephyr. And Mr. Vix geniusly, geniusly makes sure that Galen Stark can't get the opening there to get to that... Uh, submission hold and break up the count so your winners are my boys who I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt were going to win this match and that would be Mr. Vix and the British Knight my boys who are going to advance and face him Golden Mask Valiente and Oli Cannoli in a triple threat hardcore tag team championship match your Al Snow tweet of the day Recipes are like online dates. They never look like the picture. How true it is, my friend. How true it is. But that's all for this episode of Gut Check. My name's The Colonist. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.